Hey guys, there's a lot of chaos on my desk today, but what I'd like to do in this video is show you this Ugreen M2 NVMe SSD enclosure, which is actually over here and it's actually connected to my laptop. So you can see the little light there because it is connected. Before I do that, I just want to explain what's going on here and just talk about, well, basically why you would need something like this in the first place. So over here on the left hand side, I've got a lot of components which I have stripped from my main PC. Like an old car, I have removed all of the good components. I've got the Thunderbolt card here, Thunderbolt 3 card. I've got a 4K capture card from Elgato and I've got two 16 gigabyte modules. So I've decreased my main PC's memory from 64 to 32 because 32 gigabyte is going into the new PC because I've yet to buy memory for it. So I'm going to be using that for a while. And I've got the gaming laptop open here as well because essentially what I'm doing here with the main PC and with this is stealing all the good hard drives. The new computer is going to have this Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus which is apparently the fastest NVMe on the market just now, at least on a consumer level. And it's going to have this drive and it's going to have another drive, a 2 terabyte EVO Plus, 970 EVO Plus, which is currently in there. So I'm kind of moving the slower drives to the PC and to the gaming laptop. And I'm seeing slow here, but none of these drives are slow. They're all NVMe drives. They're all fast. So this uh, gaming laptop, for example, I'm going to put back in the original Dell NVMe, half terabyte and a 960 EVO. A little bit old at this point, but it still works great. So... That's what I'm doing, and all of this is possible because I have this enclosure. And these enclosures are great because they allow you to copy files, clone drives, clone your C drive, etc. Very, very useful, and for me, these are essential. But unfortunately, recently, the one that I normally use, this one, died. It just died. It is in silicon heaven. So I want to just quickly show you this one and show you what I believe to be the limitations of this one. Now, I will say I was always happy with this one. From a, a heat dissipation point of view, this was pretty decent, um, which I'll hopefully be able to show you there now. There we go. So this one was quite good how it worked. It was, you know, like an aluminium shell and you've got the indicator there in type C, it's kind of standard. And it just slid into this aluminium shell there. And this is how it worked. You just took your SSD and you just kind of put it in there and then you secured it down and you would use a screw for that. So it comes with a screwdriver, you screw it down. Now, one of the limitations of this drive is the fact that the Type-C connector here is built onto one circuit board. That's a little bit of a pain because when you take it out, you know, you're more liable to cause damage here when you're putting it back in and different things like that. Um, so that's a risk. The other downside is the fact you need a screwdriver. Now, I'm saying it's a downside. It's not really a downside, but this is certainly what a lot of companies are saying now. They're kind of moving towards drives like this, enclosures like this, sorry, which are toolless. They are toolless. They don't require you to use a screwdriver. So this is Amazon UK, and this is a sales page for the enclosure which I purchased. And I'm seeing the one which I purchased because there are a few variations out there, and I can't find the exact model which I bought on the official Ugreen website. So perhaps I've got a new one, perhaps I've got an older version, Maybe there's variations of these enclosures depending on the region which you buy them from, but I don't know. But the one that I've got here does say Thunderbolt 3 and it does say USB 3.1 Gen 2. So the maximum input here is 10 gigabits per second and the maximum output is apparently 16 gigabits per second. PCI Express 3 NVMe 1.3. Now, if you scroll down to the marketing material, you can see... Once again, 10 gigabits per second, up to two terabyte storage is plug and play, aluminium build. And it does say, uh, it shows you all the form factors here, which it supports all the different M2 variations. And it shows you here, faster heat dissipation, I'll put a question mark over that, LED indicator. It comes with a USB to USB-C cable, so it's Type-C to Type-C, and it's plug and play. Now, sales pages, they're not all that useful sometimes, so you're better testing things yourself. And um, it's went to sleep when I've been talking here, but you can see already, and I'll, I'll start it again. Uh, you can see that the target drive is not the C drive, it's the D drive here. And if you push start, you'll get up just kind of below 900 for the writing and just over 900 megabytes per second for reading. And 
that is what you'll get with this enclosure. You'll get up to 900 megabytes per second, basically, with different drives on the market, different NVMe drives on the market. Now, these speeds will be a little bit slower if you connect to uh, a regular USB Type 1, uh, USB 3.1 Gen 1 or Gen 2. If you only have a 5 gigabit or 10 gigabit port, not Thunderbolt 3, some of those speeds will be a little bit lower, and I saw that myself. So, fairly straightforward. You saw it had the indicator light here, but I want to show you how this works, right? This is it, right? Kind of standard design, very similar to the old one, but kind of smooth. But the good thing here is there's just a big button down the bottom. It just says push, which you might not be able to see here because there's so much going on here. But you just push it and look, pops open. And inside you can see a 970 EVO Plus. So there's a 970 EVO Plus, which may get in focus one day, maybe not. But that's the 970 EVO Plus and it, it, you know, it fits well, it fits a few different uh, M2 sizes, but this does not use a screw, right? So instead of an M2 screw, a regular M2 screw, you've got this little plastic fastener at the top and you just turn it to the side and then you can pop it open. Well, that's, there you go. So that's how it works like that. And, you know, it's a very easy design. It's a little bit fidgety at first because, you know, they provide an extra one of these in the box here, and a, a very basic manual, but it's kind of fidgety and it can pop out there if you don't set it out right. But what you need to do is kind of just slide it in there um, with the handle to the side, put it back in, if I can do it, put it back in like that, and then just go clockwise and tighten it up. And then um, what you need to do is take the, the arrow like this, and then it just slides back in like that. And that's it. And then you can pop it open. So as far as toolless design goes, it actually works really well, so that's pretty good. It's quite hard to recommend this to everyone, though, because, well, firstly, the build quality is a lot of bit plasticky. I mean, it's it's very plasticky. This is just ready to break. It is not secure. They really went with cheap plastic here for this part. Now, the good thing is, you know, as I said before, previously this Type-C port is just connected to the one circuit board. The good thing here is that it's separate. You know, it's not connected to the drive. You know, you take the drive out, it's not connected. It's it's separate here and you can't really damage it per se. But this does feel plasticky and it just feels cheap. But here is the biggest problem with this and why I, I really can't recommend it other than a backup enclosure. This does not have any thermal pads, which isn't always a bad thing because this one always dissipated heat well. But this is terrible for dissipating heat. With all of these drives, they got really, really warm on the outside. And then when I, you know, popped it open, opened up the drive, these things were absolutely boiling. And that's not good. Now, when I was doing it with one of the Blitzwolf drives, it honestly gave me like a burning smell. That is not good. And it's one of the, the most important things to look for in an enclosure like this. They said that, you know, heat dissipation would be good with this. But really, you should be aiming for an enclosure that has a thermal heat pad, something that's going to cool down these NVMe drives. Now, don't get me wrong, these NVMe drives can run hot. I and mean, when you put them into your motherboard, you really should have a heat pad or a, a thermal guard or something over it. But here, there just isn't any heat dissipation. There really isn't. And they say there is on the website. You know, if you go onto their website, they'll, you know, they'll talk about the heat dissipation and how it works effectively effectively and all that kind of stuff it just doesn't work in practice it really doesn't work in practice and and you know i'll probably end up keeping this just as a backup drive but i am going to look for an alternative the big issue with this though if you're only going to just quickly access some files i think this is a good solution and it is something i can recommend the problem with this comes when you're cloning drives because i was cloning two c drives and then i was copying files from other drives, you know, I was basically copying files between six or seven NVMe drives. And when you're transferring terabytes of data, these things get so, so hot and there's nothing here to stop them getting hot. And yeah, it's a little bit frustrating. As far as the design goes though, it, it does work quite well. Um, and I'll, I'll do it again just to show you how easy it is. Pop that on, make sure you've got that faced the right way. And don't lose this. That's the one thing I'd say about, you know, 
a regular M2 setup is that normally with screws, you would just buy more screws, but this might be a little bit harder to find a replacement. Once you've got it set up like that, just pop it in, that's it. So in that regard, it's very, very useful. It's probably why I'm not gonna send it back, but you know, th there's certainly a lot of issues with this. So I'd maybe look at alternatives if you're gonna be copying a lot of files and cloning drives. This is cheap, but without a doubt, it is flawed. Thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for more videos about my build. I've stripped all of the components out of my computers for my new super duper computer. So it was all capable through this drive. So many thanks to Mr. U Green. But moving forward, it's going to be interesting to see what I do with this new build. So stay tuned for that. If you get any questions about this enclosure, please do post them below. And as always, take care.